Hello friends. You've heard about it. You've read about it. You know what it is and you want it. <laughs> it's the Nikon Z9. No, I mean the Z8. Why do I keep saying that? Well, no, I, I actually know why. The Z9 shares virtually identical capability with the Z8, except for the form factor. We do own the Z9. I'm filming on it right now. And as many of you know, I've had some back issues in the last six or seven months. By the time you see this video, I will have had my second back surgery this year. And while neither the Z8 nor the Z9 are light cameras, the Z8 is lighter, which might ultimately work better for me, especially for my wildlife photography pursuits. Until that decision is actually made, Raymond and I have our trusty two other Z cameras, our Z7 and Z30, which are both lighter than the Z8, both in weight and in overall capability. Because of my injured status, Raymond has taken the lead with the Z8. And after I share a bit about this camera, we'll bring Raymond in to discuss his experience with the camera. Before we get into any of it, I want to thank the sponsor of this portion of today's video, KEH. KEH buys and sells used photography equipment. Cameras, lenses, lighting, tripods, monopods, bags, lens caps, a huge variety of gear. Raymond and I trust them to purchase gear like this beautiful Nikon 50mm f1.2 AIS lens and my beloved Nikon FM3A, and we also trust them to sell our gear too. We've sold to them several different times, and I'm not going to say that I tried to convince Raymond to sell the Z9 to KEH and then we purchased the Z8, but may have hinted at it. <laughs> the money that we would receive for the Z9 would certainly take the edge off of purchasing a new Z8. I'm just saying. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I am a KEH affiliate and I do have codes for you. If you sell your used gear to KEH and use my code, you get a bonus on top of the amount that you would normally receive. Or if you are purchasing gear, you can use my code to receive a discount. You using my links also helps let KEH know to continue supporting this channel, which helps us to continue to create free videos like this one. Thank you to KEH for continuing to partner with this channel. All right, let's talk about what the Z8 is. 45.7 megapixels and the legendary Nikon colors that keep our Nikon shelves back there fully stocked. 8K video, 12-bit video in camera, up to 150 frames per second, although at 11 megapixels, which was totally fine resolution for pro cameras a decade ago, so don't think it's unusable because it's absolutely usable. Fewer moving parts than ever with a full-time electronic shutter and autofocus capability and flexibility for miles. Pre-release capture, so when you click the shutter after the bird flies away, you can still get the shot of the bird flying. That's literally time travel and it's in the Z9. I mean the Z8. <laughs> I mean, really everything I mentioned is in both cameras. In short, if you were looking at the Z9 in the past and said, ooh, big camera, big capability, big price tag, <laughs> the Z8 is the antidote to big camera and big price tag while keeping virtually all of the same capabilities in the body. Honestly, it's really tough to talk about one without the other. In the past, with the ancient DSLRs of just a few years ago, you'd have the D5 and the D850 was small in comparison. It was slower in speed, but higher in resolution and dynamic range. In general, you would have something like the D2H and the D2X at the top, and then the D200 would be giving you most of the capability at a lower price. Same with the D3 and the D300 and D300S. By the time the D6 rolled around, the D850 was still king of the slightly lower tier with a very strong honorable mention to the D780, which we've talked a lot about when it was released and even recently. 
By the way, I will link to a few Nikon videos in the description of this video that we've done, like our videos on the D780. At first glance, that's the same relationship that the Z8 has with the Z9. The smaller sibling, just below flagship level. Except for one key difference from the past, the Z8 is the Z9, almost. There are minor differences in capability between the two, which Raymond will go over in a few minutes. Now, the form factor of the Z9 lends itself to the extra set of buttons down here. With the Z8, you'd get more of the capabilities down here if you purchase the optional grip, which also gives you the ability to add a second battery to the Z8. And battery. That's where it gets interesting. <laughs> Rated battery life for the Z8 is just over 300 shots while battery life on the beefier Z9 battery is over 700 shots. However, one thing that we've learned with mirrorless, especially with no mechanical shutter, is that battery life measured in terms of number of shots is quickly becoming obsolete. Rather, camera power on time seems to be the largest dependency. Raymond is going to cut to the chase and explain it and talk about his real life experience with the Z8. And you might be surprised by what he's gonna tell you. And to that end, let's bring Raymond in and I will leave you in his capable hands. Thank you, Lee. And since she filmed that opening, she has had her spinal fusion, which is hopefully her final surgery. She's recovering quickly. She's already back to making some videos for you all. Now on to the Z8. I have not been this passionate nor eager about a review since the Sony a7R IV was released. What seems like a decade ago, but it was only a few years ago. At the time, I proclaimed that the Sony camera was the most advanced camera that I'd ever used. We bought one. And the more we used it, though, the more we realized that the camera was built around specifications, not necessarily the overall user experience. Some of the features seemed disconnected from the others, and some couldn't be used at the same time, and some even conflicted with others, especially when you plug into an external recorder, you lost some of the advertised capability, but that was also an advertised capability. It was not ideal. Don't get me wrong, it was truly the most advanced camera we'd ever used, but since then we've been very vigilant about the difference between advanced technologically and advanced as a component of an overall user experience. Since then and before then, we've used many cameras, but until the Z8 came into our lives for a few days, I hadn't really had those same feelings about a camera since that Sony a7R IV. In fact, I almost dismissed the notion of reviewing the Z8. I proudly proclaimed, it's the Z9. We even shared this sentiment on a podcast we did recently, which we'll link to down below. And then the call came out with Lee preparing for surgery and really not able to travel well at all. We decided that the Z8 did need to go to the Grand Canyon, but with me flying solo. This was the turning point for me in the Z8. Normally Lee takes the lead with the gear. And then we work together to make our talking points concise and easy for the widest audience possible to understand. I'd be taking the lead this time, and it was important for me to approach the Z8 as it is. Not as a smaller Z9, but as its own unique tool. I was prepared to be impressed, neutral about it, or disappointed. In the end, it was something different than any of those feelings. In fact, I found myself channeling my inner Hugh Brownstone. You may not realize this, but we all actually have an inner Hugh Brownstone. Some of us are just more in touch with it than others. Hugh himself has an inner Hugh Brownstone. It's just how this works. Your inner Hugh Brownstone is that deep Zen voice telling you to take your time and enjoy the experience. Nowhere is that more appropriate than with a review of the Z8 because of its close technical relationship with the Z9. Oh, well, I gotta take a breath. I'm really tired. I need to lay down. I, I, I need to lay down for a minute.
Inner Hugh Brownstone. 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 Raymond. Wakey wakey. Okay, not that much wakey wakey. Just enough to hear me, your inner Hugh Brownstone, somewhere in that liminal space between darkness and the dawn. But you know what I'm going to tell you first. I am not your inner Hugh Brownstone after all. Only Hugh Brownstone can truly have an inner Hugh Brownstone. Although this speaking about one's self in the third person kind of thing is just... Eh. Anyway, the point is, you don't need me. One's true inner voice, one's most authentic inner voice is one's own inner voice, an utterly unique thing. How could it be any other way? Beyond the internal fault lines and doubts we all have, it is the internal fortitude that allows us to look past the 24-7 WWF froth masquerading as news, the Orwellian doublespeak passing for political leadership, the courage to see all, most especially one's self clearly, and deal with it. Your inner voice, I know, I was having coffee with him just last week, is telling you that whatever other thoughts you may have about it, the Nikon Z8 is not a list of specifications, but instead a gestalt, an amalgamation of glass, metal, electronics, polycarbonate, silicone probably somewhere, whatever. No more than an inert brick actually, until it melds with the heart, mind, and soul of the photographer holding it. Focus on that, how it felt to you. Stop worrying about trying to be Lee or anyone else, just be you. It will all work out. But the more powerful truth is this. You're not really dreaming about the Z8 or your inner Hugh Brownstone at all. You're dreaming about Lee's health. Of course you are. You're both scared, but you've got this too. You're both strong. You both chose wisely. You have each other. Heart and soul, man. Heart and soul. And hey, it really is darkest before the dawn. Soon enough, the two of you will be dancing, literally. Joie de vivre once again. Although let's face it, entering a dance competition was never going to be the best use of your time. I mean, just saying, inner voice and all. But you don't have to hold that thought. That was a really wordy dream. In fact, saying that the Z8 is basically the Z9 is like saying that all pairs of shoes are the same. You put them on and walk, right? They're all the same. Or that all bicycles are the same. You pedal and move forward. One is the same as the other. In reality, there's all types of shoes and sneakers and bicycles and everything. Sneakers help you walk, but there's thousands of different styles and all sorts of appropriate uses for different shoes. Even though all the basic specifications are the same laces, some padding, and made to fit your foot. Same with bicycles. But there's beach cruisers, there's road bikes, racing bikes, mountain bikes, recumbent bikes, electric bikes, tricycles, and it goes on and on. And while the technical specifications of the Z8 do closely parallel the Z9, there's no challenging that. It wasn't until that three-day Grand Canyon trip until I realized that the Z8 is truly its own thing. It's not a Z9, and I was wrong to say or think that it was. Chances are you already know a lot about the Z8. We're not the first ones on YouTube to talk about it, and this review is later than many of the great reviews that have already been published. Like always, we wanted to take our time, and with one of us going through the surgery ringer, it was all a balancing act of priorities. For Lee's part, she's very well acquainted with the Z9, so with her short time with the Z8, she was very productive with it and had a detailed understanding of it from the moment she grabbed it. The DNA is the Nikon Pro body arrangement with some subtle differences from the Z9 across the top of the camera. But if you've used a D800 series Nikon, a D750, a D300 or D300S, D700, D200, half a dozen other high-end Nikon DSLRs, You'll be right at home here. Not just for the arrangement of the buttons and dials, but the form factor of the camera is decidedly different from the Z6 and Z7. This is the Z camera for the D850 lover, the DSLR lover, the person who doesn't want smaller, 
even if it could be smaller. They want a camera that's easy to grab and go, but with your whole hand. The same could be said of the Z9, but the Z9 has the integrated grip, adding additional heft and size to the camera. There's nothing wrong with that. It all depends on you and what you want. And I'm glad we have the choice. For those holding on to the DSLR lifestyle, I get it. Mirrorless cameras tend to be smaller. The Z7 doesn't fit in my whole hand. This finger sticks out. Never has that been on my mind more than right now after using the Z8. The Z8 is the mirrorless body that may put a lot of Nikon DSLR users over the edge. It's built like a DSLR. It's feature forward like a DSLR would be if it was released in 2023. And it has the confident size and handling of a DSLR. It's the pro controls, it's two fast card slots, and contrary to what even I thought before actually using it, it has battery life for freaking miles. When the SEPA ratings were published for the Z8 battery life, they show under 350 shots per charge. Lee and I were both thinking, add 10 to 15 minutes of 8K video to that, and maybe we're talking half that battery life. It seemed that battery life would be the one giant flaw that everyone would be talking about with this camera. And we'd be say, all saying, very nice camera, but bring a wagon of batteries. In fact, on my very first charge, the night I arrived at the Grand Canyon, only capturing a few images, it looked like doom was setting in. In fact, I'm showing you a picture of the back of the camera, but the deal with the three shots consuming over 20% of the reported battery life is that I was spending time in the menus reacquainting myself with all of the advanced Nikon menu options. I was experimenting with focus modes, tracking things like the lamps and the hotel without taking any pictures. And I was leaving the camera on for periods of time while unpacking my other gear. The deal is this, as I was out with the camera actually taking pictures, camera set up to my liking and preferences, the battery life was actually amazing. It seems that with mirrorless cameras, particularly those with an electronic shutter only, like the Z8 and the Z9, battery life is dependent on how long the camera is on rather than how many exposures are captured. Now, I'm not going to pretend to know which features consume more battery life than others, but as you can see from my progression of battery usage screens, Things got better and better as I went. Once the camera and I were in sync and I wasn't hunting through the menus, I got battery life that far exceeded the SEPA ratings. And with two back-to-back -back time lapses, I got battery life that I have not seen since our DSLR dependent days. I will mention that one time on the trip, I used the Z7's native battery, the ENEL15B. And on that battery from my normal shooting, I did get performance similar to the SEPA rating for the Z8 with its battery. Now the Z7 battery is older with lower specs than the Z8's native ENEL15C. So from my individual experience using the Z8 battery in the Z8, the any discussion of battery life is a non-issue. For three days with the camera, I did something that Lee and I do best together, but certainly can do apart. I toured Grand Canyon National Park. I've been there countless times and each time is very different from the others. The canyon is so amazing and vast that it has something different to offer each and every time. I went to some of the most popular overlooks and also Shoshone Point, which isn't a secret per se, but it's sort of off the menu and does require a bit of hiking to access. What you're treated with, however, when you make that hike is near 360 degree views of what is truly one of the wonders of the world. Although I did encounter a handful of tourists there, everyone at Shoshone Point shares a certain collective awe and is experiencing a feast for the senses. A sunset there would have been nice, but I did want to do sunset at Desert View Tower, where you can get amazing views down the length of the canyon, particularly at sunset this time of year. As I approached Desert View Lookout on East Rim Drive, I couldn't help but notice over to my left, over the canyon, clouds and storms were brewing. 
always respectful of speed limits or even going slower with all the wildlife in the area, it started to feel like a very low speed race against time to get to Desert View. I could continually see the clouds changing over the canyon to my left, and my fear was that they would quickly disappear. The weather patterns over the canyon can truly change in the blink of an eye. And this led to my Z8 moment. Not quite at Desert View, I passed Navajo Point, but quickly made a mostly legal late left turn into the Navajo Point lookout parking lot. I had to make a quick decision to change plans. From past trips, I know that you can exit your car there, go past the curb on the left side of the parking lot, and set up on some boulders right at the canyon's edge and look west down miles and miles of canyon. It looks like it goes on forever. At this point, the Z8 and I were fully and spiritually linked. I knew I'd have to set up quickly or run the risk of missing these amazing skies in motion with a time lapse. This is where the human side of the Z8 shined for me. I know the interval timer screens. We've made videos about this on past Nikons and they come into play each and every time we do astrophotography. I did leave auto ISO on at a minimum 1 100th shutter speed using an interval of three seconds. So I could have turned auto ISO off and let exposure run longer. With the ominous clouds and not knowing how long the camera would need to write the raw images, I didn't want the shutter speed creeping up on even half of the three second interval. I briefly considered changing the minimum auto ISO shutter speed to something a little bit longer, and then I had to move, I had to decide. And I quickly decided it was better to get the shots, not run the risk of changing some unintended setting in the camera and, and be in the menus. So I left it. The speed at which I was able to work with the camera to set it up and those time value based decisions about configuration were rewarded. And then there was another decision to make. The clouds ended their show, but it was not quite sunset yet. Do I mess with it? Do I let it go to darkness with the sun off to the side? I took a deep breath and I moved the camera towards the sun and I refocused and I was again rewarded from quick thinking. It made me feel like I was so in tune with the camera, the weather, and the canyon that I could do no wrong that night. The time lapse was beyond anything I thought I'd capture over these three days. Honestly, I felt like it was the time lapse I needed to deliver to Lee, but wasn't sure I was going to get. You just never know. And that's what brings us back time and time again. And I'd go back 100 more times with the hope that I'd see something even half as good as I did on that night. Could I have had that same experience with the Z9? The answer is that I'll never know what that day would have looked like with the larger camera. Would it have leapt out of the car seat into my hand the way that the Z8 did? I'm not sure. Would I have gotten it as quickly on the tripod and firing away? Would the larger size and weight of the Z9 dissuaded me from the earlier hike, which then maybe would have had me arriving at Navajo Point at a less advantageous time? There's no way to know. But I can tell you that the Z8 on that day, in those circumstances, worked in sync with me to near perfection. Other cameras certainly could have done the job that day. I'm not going to pretend that you need the Z8 to do exactly as I had. 
However, with its capabilities that match the Z9, you know that it has your back. With the right lens or lenses in hand, you're going to be able to go from landscapes one moment, wildlife the next, getting some of the most advanced capabilities in any camera for each art form. What I'm saying is that the Z8 packs a punch, not just for its size, but for any size. And it happens to have a size and form factor that matches up quite well with its many uses, and that's hard to beat. One question we've been asked most frequently since launch is, are we buying it? <laughs> with a Z9 in hand and a Z7 and a Z30, we begrudgingly sent the loaner Z8 back to Nikon with mixed emotions. For what we do, the Z9 is the sledgehammer and the, the Z7 is nearly as capable and gets lighter weight travel and hiking duty for us, while the Z30 tends to get all the B-roll. Well, it does for Lee, I can't stand the fact that the Z30 does not have a viewfinder. It's fair to say that if we didn't have the Z9, we'd be getting a Z8 immediately, and if the Z8 had come out first, we'd probably already own one and would not be picking up a Z9. But it's tough to think about not having one for those three days to the canyon, at the canyon, and on the way back from the canyon. The Z8 rode shotgun in my car, ready for anything. I told you, when we, meaning the Z8 and I, saw the weather over the Grand Canyon abruptly change, we made a sharp left, quickly changed plans, and had time lapses going almost immediately. The Z8 was ready for any of it with fantastic image quality, including its amazing dynamic range, the speed, grace, and immediacy that Nikon Pro bodies have always had. With me, I had lenses for the job, plenty of experience with the Nikon menus and settings. In short, it was just all a perfect fit. That's why it was so hard to pack up and send the Z8 back home to Nikon. That perfect fit. That camera you can use with your eyes closed. The camera you can grab off the front seat of the car, tripod in your other hand, jogging towards a secluded spot before the weather changes once more to set up a time lapse of a scene that was so beautiful and powerful, it left me in real, like nearly ugly crying tears. To have those thousand plus images from that moment, to relive that time over and over again, that's more than a camera. I think we've all gone through phases where our creativity has been lacking. And for me, that trip, that pressure to perform and create and to do it in a way where I try to bring something amazing home to my hurting wife, that really lit a fire for me. Is it just the camera? No. The camera is just but one of the many elements that come together to spark your creativity. But it's also truly where the rubber meets the road. The whole experience meant a lot to me. And as soon as I had what I needed photographically, it was time to get home to my girl. Where I was able to say, don't worry, we did it. Me and the Z8, we did good. You're going to love it. That really felt good. I know that got personal. <laughs> That's who Lee and I are and how we are. I wouldn't trade those feelings and the willingness to share them for anything. Now, we gotta talk, we gotta talk about the Z8 and we can do that down in the comments. Have you been looking at one? Were you one of the first lucky ones to receive one? Or is it just not your thing? Let us know. Let's have some good discussion down there and see where it goes. As always, and on behalf of Lee and myself, thank you for watching.